Okay, sit down everyone, let's sit down in your seats. Oh, I think I need enough energy to sing that song once. So maybe we'll have to sing it next week. So if you want to sing it again, you'll have to be there. Oh, I'm tired. Now I feel like a, now I feel like a wiggle. <sighs> okay, all right. Time to be quiet. You're going to pay attention now. We're up to week 23. Week 23. Wow. Time is going so quick, isn't it? All right, let's start with a word of prayer. So hands together. Let's close our eyes. We're not going to be mucking around because we're going to be talking to God now. Okay, let's pray. All right, thank you, Lord. Thank you for uh, the fun that we can have in Bible Club. Pray that you help us to learn a little bit about Ezekiel this morning. We have fun in the activity. So we thank you for Jesus. Through him, we can have eternal life. And we pray these things in his name. Amen. 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 Okay, quiet, quiet, quiet. No mucking around. Three rules. What are my three rules? Be quiet. Very good. What's my second rule? Timothy. Good. Put your hand up. You want to say something? Who knows the last one that we've missed? No walking around. That's right. You want to sit quietly. You want to pay attention when the bishop's talking. Okay. So, Timothy, you work on tying that shoelace. Let's tie that shoelace up. Okay. Remember your attendance pin, so don't miss out on a Bible club. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on one of those green gems in your pin. Okay. So, we want to make sure we're here every week. Book number 26 in the Bible. 26. <laughs> Book number 26 is Ezekiel. So remember, we're in, we've learned about Jeremiah, Isaiah already. Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Maybe you've heard people that are named by these names. People call their children by these names because these are famous prophets in the Bible. Ezekiel is another one during the time of the captivity. So this is now after Jeremiah. Jeremiah told them about the coming captivity and he saw the destruction of the temple. Now Ezekiel is preaching to them while they're in captivity, reminding them of their sinfulness and that one day God will bring them back. So I got this picture of Ezekiel. This is somebody's drawing of Ezekiel. We don't know exactly what he looks like. So just remember every time you see a picture of somebody in the Bible, they didn't have videos and photos back then. So we don't know exactly what they look like. But from the descriptions in the Bible, people draw what they think they might have looked like. So this is somebody's cartoon of what Ezekiel might look like. What's this thing in the background? It's a big wheel. Why is that for Ezekiel? Why does Ezekiel have a big wheel? Well, it's because one of the big things about Ezekiel at the beginning of his book is he sees this vision of God in heaven and he sees these wheels and these odd creatures and he's given a scroll and you know what God says to him? He says, you've got to eat that scroll. <laughs> in that vision. Eat a book. Don't do that at home. I eat the book, but in this vision, he's given a bit of God's word and he eats it. You know, so it's like God's giving him his word to preach. That's the, the image there in this vision. And he sees God high and lifted up and the wheels and he's trying to describe what he's seeing in heaven. And it, there's these creatures with four faces, one like a man, a lion, a, uh, what was that, a, a, an ox, an eagle. So he sees this vision, and that's something that Ezekiel's known for. So he sees this vision in the beginning, and also he prophesies about, if you remember Jeremiah as well, prophesied about the wickedness of Israel, the things that they were doing. Not only were they burning their children to Molech, but there was all this idolatry happening in the temple. You know, when God walks Ezekiel through the temple, he sees all this idolatry going on. And Ezekiel is prophesying, he's preaching to them, he's telling them, about their sin. Sometimes like us, we have to tell people about their sin so that they know they're a sinner that needs to turn to the Lord. And you know something that <coughs> God says in Ezekiel that's very sad is the reason why God had to judge Israel because it says here, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none. So Ezekiel saying, God was looking for somebody to stand between God's wrath and the people, but there was nobody. Isn't that sad when there's nobody 
to serve the Lord in order to stand and make up that gap. So even though because of their sin, God sent them into captivity, if you remember, and during the Jeremiah's preaching, and then remember when he lamented, he's known as the weeping prophet because the temple was destroyed. But what Ezekiel prophesied about is now that they're in captivity, he was saying, hey, even though we've sinned one day, you know, when we turn back to God, God will bring us back into the land. And, he, and Ezekiel taught the people of Israel about one day the rebuilding of the temple, that they would go back. So there's two meanings here, right? Uh, you can ask me a question afterwards. So there's two meanings here. One is the actual physical rebuilding of the temple that they broke, but there's also a spiritual application where there's going to be one day a, a, a heavenly temple that will re be rebuilt, referring to salvation. And this is the one that Simon knows about in Ezekiel. One of the famous events in Ezekiel is the Valley of the Dry Bones. Who's heard of the Valley of the Dry Bones? Timothy and Simon have heard of it. Well, you're going to hear about it today. The Valley of the Dry Bones. You know what God does with Ezekiel? He takes him to this valley and there's all these bones in the valley. And he asks Ezekiel, can these bones live? And you know what he tells Ezekiel to do? He tells Ezekiel to preach to these bones. And you know what happens? A miracle happens to these bones, that these bones start having skin and flesh come onto them, basically like raises them up from a, the dead, like a dead body, but there's no life in them. Right? So he's preaching to these bones, and these bones start getting skin and flesh, even though they're not living people. There's no soul inside them. But this picture that Ezekiel sees of these dry bones coming to life again, this is telling of the future, where one day us, as sinners, we believe on Jesus, we're going to get raised from the dead, given a new body, right? the resurrection from the dead, for those that put their faith on Jesus. But if you don't put your faith on Jesus, you stay dead, like the valley of the dry bones. So this is one thing that Ezekiel is known for. We'll read this one together. This is Ezekiel 37, 14. And, sh and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Let's read this together. You ready? Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 14. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. So you see how there's one day there's going to be a resurrection. And for those that believe on Jesus Christ, they will be resurrected with the new spirit we're given. When? We believe on Jesus. So you see how Ezekiel not only was telling of them coming back one day to rebuild the temple physically, but we don't want to forget the spiritual lesson, which is for us, we have sinned, just like the nation of Israel has sinned, all of us. All of us deserve to go into captivity, which is hell. But if we put our faith on Jesus Christ, we will partake in this resurrection. We will be saved. And that's the lesson of Ezekiel. So we've got a craft. I'll just show you what we're going to do. We've got a craft today to remind us of the Valley of the Dry Bones. Oh, so we're going to make a little skeleton. It'll look like this, okay? So we need to cut out all the skeleton pieces and then we're going to stick it together with some of our pins that we've got. And hopefully, if you work quickly, you should go home with one of these. And if you don't finish colouring it in today, you can finish colouring it at home. And when you get home, you can cut out the other faces. So it comes with this face, but you can choose what face you want to put on it today. So you choose one face. And when you get home, you can cut out the other ones and you can replace it. Do you want to change the face of the there's skeleton? Way, you can. There's a way how you can just like take it off. You actually bend down the bottom and cut the 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's go to the back. Let's get started so we don't run out of time. <laughs>